Hello there, hi, assalamualaikum. This is Amna here from My English Matters. Great to be here again for our weekly Facebook Live sessions on Tuesdays. So if you are watching me, say hello to me so that I don't feel so lonely on the side. Uh, give me a like, give me a heart, share this video because today we are going to talk about how to improve your vocabulary. So many people, many of our followers and many of our subscribers, they write to us through email and they write in our comments and they ask us, Madam, how do I improve my vocabulary? Because that is the thing that they feel holds them back from speaking fluently. Okay, so that's what I'm going to be talking about. Hello, Nor Zaitul. Sima? Chima? Shima? Hi, Aisha. Hello, Azima. Hello, Nazahatul. Shaida. Hello, so great to see you this morning. Thanks for joining me. Is this your first time watching? Hello, Ki. Fatin Yanni, Yan. All right. Thanks for joining me and thanks for saying hi. It's great to see you. So today we're going to talk about how to improve your vocabulary. Uh, let me share with you my slides. Are we ready? I hope you are all ready for this. So I'm going to share 10 tips. These are tips based on my own experience and our experience teaching our students. So if you Google how to improve your vocabulary, you will find lots of tips. But I've collected the 10 tips that I feel that have worked for me and have worked for our students in My English Matters. So let's start, shall we? Right, so, so there are 10 tips here. The first one, number one, focus on improving your active vocabulary. So as I was reading up, uh, on this topic about improving your vocabulary, I found out that there are two types of vocabulary. There is the passive vocabulary and there is the active vocabulary. So what's the difference? Right, I, wrote, I wrote down the meaning here. So what does passive vocabulary mean? The passive vocabulary are words, all the words that you might recognize when reading or listening but not words that you could use confidently on your own. So that is passive vocabulary. So maybe you are listening to me, you can understand 80%, 90%, 100% of what I say. So that is your passive vocabulary, the words that you understand when you hear and when you listen, but you don't feel confident using those words. So those are passive vocabulary, okay? What about active vocabulary? Active voc vocabulary, are all the words that you can comfortably use when speaking and writing. So there are two different types of vocabulary. There's passive, there is active. So maybe you understand a lot of words when you read or when you listen or when you watch TV shows, you understand the words, but you don't feel confident to use them. So those are the passive vocabulary. But the words that you are confident in using by yourself, using them on your own in speaking and writing, that is your active vocabulary. So now I want you to focus on improving your active vocabulary. So maybe you have a lot of words that you understand when you hear them, when you listen, to, when you read them, but you don't know how to use them when you write or when you speak. So let's focus on turning the passive vocabulary and make them active, all right? So that's the first thing that I want you to focus on. So most people, when they say that they want to improve their vocabulary, what they mean is they want to improve their active vocabulary. I hope that's clear, the difference between passive, passive and active. I think that is one of the things that you have to understand, that the vocabulary that you understand and know is already enough, but it's just a matter of being confident in using them when you speak and write. So you don't have to focus on learning big, bombastic words that common people don't use, but it's all about being confident in using the words that you already know and understand. Okay? Hello, wa alaikum salam, Shifa, Daniel, Ain, Azib, Lan, Hani, Said. Okay, great. You say this, you have poor vocabulary. I hope you are listening, taking down notes as well. There are 10 tips here. So there are, uh, I hope you take down notes. I've already highlighted, if you look at the slides, they're like, I've highlighted the words that I feel are important. So, number two, if you ask us, like, what do I do? How do I expand my vocabulary? And we always say read, 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 and read, right? But 
I've added something here. Read books and articles that you find interesting. Because when we tell our students, okay, you have to read a lot. That's the main thing that you have to do to improve your vocabulary. And in their mind, they are thinking, okay, I want to, I have to read textbooks. I have to read grammar books, boring, thick books about English grammar and stuff like that. But I want you to read books and articles that you find interesting. Make reading a habit. And if reading is not interesting to you, then it's not going to be a habit, right? The main pillars of creating good habits are that it has to be interesting and it has to be easy. So find things that you are interested in about, interested about and look for books, whether it's audio books or real physical books and read about those topics that you find interesting. It doesn't have to be books. It could be just online articles. So, example, if you like reading the newspaper, for example, get an English newspaper instead. Read English newspapers instead. If you like reading about celebrity gossip, for example, I know many of you like that, right? Uh, read it in English instead. There's always the English version. You will find it online if you just Google it in English, right? Latest celebrity gossip in Malaysia, for example. Okay, I'm not promoting gossip, especially during this Ramadan month. But I'm just giving you an example that if you like something, if you like reading about that topic in Malay, look for the equivalent in English. Okay? And for me, uh, people say that if you read fiction, fiction are like usually novels, it also can help to expand your vocabulary because they use words to describe things and they use words to describe emotions and feelings that can help to expand your vocabulary as well i read a lot of fiction uh, when in my 20s and below but now that i'm in my 30s i tend to prefer other books like factual books i don't really read fiction anymore i like to read books on personal development i like to read books on business what else what else books do i have there um marketing I like to read memoirs and autobiographies. So read things that you find interesting. And fiction is good. It's a good start. If you like fiction, read fiction. I'm currently reading Harry Potter again with my children. I've mentioned this before. And I like the language that it uses. It's different from reading factual books because it's more, the, the words are more creative. They use like really good words to evoke emotions out of the reader. Okay. So read books that, and articles that you find interesting. You don't necessarily have to read textbooks, grammar books, if you don't like those types of books. Okay, next one. Lan says, I like vocabulary books. Okay, that's great. If you like vocabulary books, why not? That's good for you. Number three, watch videos and TV shows with English captions or subtitles. All right. Usually what we say is watch English speaking shows. That's not necessarily the case here. Maybe you like to watch Korean shows, right? And you watch, I'm assuming that you're not Korean and you don't understand Korean. So watch the show with English subtitles. So subtitles are usually the words at the bottom of the video. Maybe this video, if you're watching it now, may have captions. Captions are usually the transcript of the video itself. So it's either captions or subtitles. If you're watching English speaking shows, then turn on the captions so that you can see the words that come out as well. Now, some people say that watching English shows with captions may not be very good for your listening skills. But for in this particular case, we are talking about expanding your vocabulary. I think it's good because when I was a kid, I used to watch a lot of TV. Um, and then during in the 90s, we had this option. I'm sure you have, we have it now, but during those days, there was this option to turn on uh, captions. It was created for people with hearing disabilities. So we used to turn that on and we used to enjoy watching TV shows, uh, Australian soaps. I don't know if you've watched Australian soaps here, but I used to watch Australian soaps like Neighbours and Home and Away. I used to turn that on and I used to enjoy reading the words as they said them because it helped me to improve my vocabulary and it also helped me to improve my pronunciation because I would see a word I'd see how it's spelt, but I may not know how it's pronounced. So when I hear them saying it, it helps me to improve my pronunciation as well. Anthea says, even listening to good English songs helps. Yes, that's really good. I like to listen 
sort of music as well. Just before this Facebook Live, I was listening to some music. And I like to look at the lyrics as well. It helps, it helps also for me to be creative when I write. Um, all right. Akmal says, books versus podcasts or reading versus listening. Do we need to balance it? It's really up to you. I do a mixture of books. I also listen to podcasts. It's all about uh, introducing English into your life in different ways. So you don't have to be so uh, particular about balancing it. But, you know, if you don't listen or if you don't read English content at all, just introduce listen step by step. You know, maybe you can start reading an hour a week in English. I like to do things step by step. I don't like to go all in because I find it's easier for me to sustain a new habit when I introduce it little by little, bit by bit. All right, so that's not so overwhelming for me. All right, number four, which is listen to English speaking podcasts and or radio stations. So Akmal mentioned about podcasts. If you are not familiar with what podcasts are, podcasts are, they're kind of like radio stations, but they're on your phone. So if you go, if you have an iPhone, you can look for the app called Apple Podcasts. If you are using uh, an Android phone, you can find podcasts on Spotify. You can find it on Google Podcasts. There are a lot of uh, podcast platforms, but the three popular ones are Spotify, Apple Podcasts for iPhone, and uh, Google Podcasts. So what podcasts are they like? Basically, they're like radio stations, and you can find any topic under the sun, and you will find a podcast related to it. Uh, what you can do is, if you are new to podcasts, um, you don't necessarily have to listen to educational podcasts. I mean, we do have our podcast. We Our podcast is called the My English Matters Podcasts. We are on Apple, uh, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, yeah. Um, I'm just promoting our own podcast, I know, right? But anyway, yeah, you don't necessarily have to listen to podcasts that are educational. Ours is educational. Um, you can listen to anything that interests you. So if you love listening to uh, news about politics, or if you love keeping up with, um, I don't know, there are lots of podcasts. There are like crime podcasts, there are business podcasts, uh, personal development podcasts, health podcasts, parenting podcasts. So it's really up to you to choose the topics that interest you or topics that you are curious about and look for a podcast related to that topic. Uh, another tip that if you are new to podcasting and you don't know what to watch, because we do get students asking us like, what podcast do you recommend? I would recommend you, say for example, um, the problem that I'm having right now, say I want to discipline my children, right? For example, giving you an example. Uh, then that would be parenting, right? So Google, you can go online, go to Google and type in top podcasts for parenting. And then they will probably come up with a list of the top 10 podcasts on parenting and start from there. Just start from there. If you're new to podcasts, start from there, right? Start on something that you are interested in or something that you are curious about to start listening to podcasts if you are like i don't have a smartphone i can't listen to podcasts then you can listen to english speaking radio stations right what's great about podcasts is that you can listen to it while you are driving you can listen to podcasts while you are cleaning the house or doing other things that doesn't really need you to focus that much so it's like taking in information as well as learning english at the same time uh, Madam Azma says she likes to listen to podcasts while she's cleaning. Yeah. Uh, Aisha. Hey, wait, who is that? Aisha, Aisha says, science podcasts are always fascinating to me. Yeah. She likes science. Uh, Lan says you, uh, he listens to podcasts too. That's great. Okay. Next. Next tip. Number five. Use a dictionary and thesaurus to look up meanings and synonyms. Oh, let me see, I have a question here from Shahir. What is your favorite English speaking radio station? 
Hmm. I like to, when I was younger, I used to like listening to Mix FM or Hits FM. But as I'm growing older, I think it's just like the songs don't really meet my my taste anymore. I'm like, you know, you know you're growing old when the songs that are on Hits and Mix FM are a bit too young for you. So I like to listen to uh, BFM sometimes. Or sometimes when I'm just listening to music, I just put on anything that's on there. And if I don't like the, the song, I just change channels. I So I don't have a favourite uh, radio station. I would say BFM if you want to listen to uh, content about related to business and things in general, news in general. Daniel says he listens to podcasts while jogging. Okay, that's great. Okay, now let's go to number five now. Use a dictionary and thesaurus to look up meanings and synonyms. Okay, I just want to share you with, with you. When I was a kid, I had this really thick, we had this really thick Oxford dictionary and I would like to go just go through it randomly. I think it's because our teachers back then, they always said, you know, go through the dictionary, read the dictionary. So I was one of those really um, nerdy students who liked to do whatever the teacher told us to do. So I would go through the dictionary randomly and look for words to learn. Yeah, that's the kind of kid that I was. Um, but I liked learning new words and I liked using them in my writing because when I was a kid, I used to love writing. I used to write stories when I was a, when I was a child. So I'd use those new words in, uh, in my writing. But nowadays, people don't really keep dictionaries, big fat dictionaries. They use dictionaries online, which is great too. So if you come across a word that, um, that you don't understand, you could just Google it. Just use a dictionary to Google it. And at the same time, you use the thesaurus, okay? But now that everything is online, you don't really need one dictionary and one thesaurus. You can also find synonyms. So synonyms are words that have similar meaning meanings to the word that you were looking for. So if you look for the definition of something, usually you will find the synonyms there. So when you are learning synonyms, you're not just learning that one word that you looked up, you're also list learning new words of similar words that have that same meaning. So it's like three in one or two in one, okay? Um, and you can also look up antonyms. So antonyms are the opposite meaning. So imagine you were, wanted to look up the word for, oh, let me think, I can't think of a word right now, but just imagine that you have one word that you've, that you found when you were reading or when you were listening to a podcast, you didn't know what it meant. Just look it up online, look for the meaning and just choose a few, uh, few of the synonyms that you can start using or just, just know the meanings to help you expand your vocabulary. And also look at the antonym, the opposite meaning of it. Number six, keep a vocabulary journal. So if you want to go the extra step, you've looked up the word, you've looked up uh, synonyms and antonyms, keep a journal, like a notebook, just a plain old notebook, uh, write it down. And then if you want to go even further, take down uh, sentences that use the words that you've just learned, right? Sometimes we learn a word, but we know the meaning, but we don't know how to use it properly in a sentence. So it's great to look up the word and look up sentences to use so that you can refer to it and see how it's used properly. So keep a vocabulary journal is great. And another good thing about having a vocabulary journal is that sometimes when we look up something online, we tend to forget the word, right? Uh, but writing it, it helps you to internalize what you've just learned because you can see it in your own writing, you're writing it down with a pen and paper. You can see it with your own writing and it kind of sticks better. It sticks to your memory better when you write something down. That's what I, I believe. Oh, Nomi says that. Nomi says, I love reading dictionaries too, but nowadays sometimes I play the word game on Google. Yeah, that's great. Word games are really good as well. I liked, I liked. Scrabble when I was younger. I played Scrabble with my siblings and I was very competitive when I played Scrabble. 
I would like really think of the long words, you know, so that I would get as much points as I could. And I'd make sure that I'd put the Scrabble pieces on the board in the part where it's like triple points or something like that. Yeah, now you know how, what I was like as a kid, right? <laughs> um, let me see. Yeah, antonyms are the opposite meaning. Um, Muhammad Afkar says he likes to read history books. They have a lot of vocabularies where we rarely find it. Yep, history is great. I love history as well. Madamazuma says, I miss playing Scrabble with my sisters. Okay, we've got to play Scrabble when we meet, when the next time we meet for our meeting, okay? <laughs> but when we meet, we end up just talking too much. We just don't end up doing anything. All right, next, next tip. Keep an English journal or diary. So, as you can see, uh, as I go through these 10 tips, I go through the most easy tip to the harder ones, which are the next steps kind of tips. So this is for those people who are extra hardworking and these, these extra steps will help you to improve your vocabulary even more. So you have to go that extra mile to expand your vocabulary, okay? So number seven, keep an English journal or a diary. So what I mean is that some of you, I know most people, they don't keep diaries anymore. I kept a diary when I was about eight years old. I kept a diary. I wrote, dear diary, today I went to school and this girl said something nasty to me. I used to write all kinds of things, the things that happened during my day. Now I still keep, uh, it's not a diary, it's more like a journal. So I keep a journal. I write almost every day, every and every every morning and every evening. So... I write down things like what happened during the day. Um, I write things on what I can do to be to to be better, to be a better person, or what things that I am grateful for. So I keep a journal. That's more of a practice for me to continue writing to get my thoughts out onto paper, because writing does help you to. So you may be asking, like, how can it expand my vocabulary when you are writing? When you are writing in English, which is, which is not your first language, you're forcing yourself to think in English. So when you are writing about what happened during your day, for example, and then you come across something that you know the word in Malay, but you don't know the English word, then you just quickly look it up, right? Quickly look it up online from your phone, and then you write. It's just a practice of getting your thoughts out in English because that can help you when you have to speak. It's the same thing when you are speaking, you may tend to think in your first language. But it's like for me, my language, my first language is Malay. So I may think in Malay, but I'm used to writing a lot that I already have come across those words that I was not comfortable with. And I already looked them up online. So it comes easier for me when it comes to speaking, okay? So keep an English journal diary. Maybe you don't want to write every day. You could just write once a week, things that you were grateful for. This is sort of a practice for you to get your thoughts out onto paper, get your thoughts out, get your Malay language thoughts or your first language thoughts out in English so that when you do come across a situation where you have to speak up or you have to express yourself, it's easier for you because you've already done the practice at home, okay? Number eight, practice translating to English. So this is similar to uh, number seven, where you are trying to write in English because your thoughts are in your first language. So practice translating to English. Do this in your spare time, okay? For those people who like to take the extra step, practice translating to English. So I used to work as a translator. I was a translator for about six years. I translated English shows to Malay, uh, Malay shows to English, but I did mostly English shows to Malay. And at first, it was really difficult. It was really difficult for me to translate from one language to the other. Because when you are, when you are in the mode of English, your thoughts are in English. So it's hard to translate that to, and get into the mode of Malay thinking. However, the more that I did it, the more that I translated English to Malay, 
the faster it became. For now, I can, it's easier, it's much easier for me to translate from English to Malay and Malay to English on the spot. I can do it on the spot. Don't test me now. <laughs> I can't do it live. But it's easier for me now compared to what it was before because I've done it so many times. So I think this can help you as well. If you tend to think in English, sorry, if you tend to think in your first language and you tend to have to translate when you are speaking, you translate in your mind, try doing more of that in your spare time so that it's easier for you when you speak. So it's it, the, the process is faster. Because I know that many of our students, they think in their first language, language and when they have to speak, it takes them time to actually process the translation in their heads and get the words out in English. But the more that you do that, the faster it becomes. Okay, so don't give up. Just keep on doing whatever that you're doing now. Just keep on translating in your mind or translating on a piece of paper. It will get easier, inshallah, the more that you do something. Okay. Um, Akmal says, personally, I think writing in English does make you, con make you conscious about the grammatical aspects of English language. Yes, it does. It really does. When you write, you think, because when you, when, when, when you keep everything in your head, you think that you have everything together, right? But when you're writing it, you notice, oh, I, this, there's a grammatical mistake here, or, oh, this isn't the correct word to use it. You're actually seeing your thoughts on paper. And then you can edit yourself, all right, so that you prepare yourself when it comes to speaking. So translating also helps to expand your vocabulary because another thing is if you are trying to translate yourself from your first language to, uh, to English and you come across a word that you don't know in English, just look it up online, write it down, and the next time you have to use that word, it will be faster for you to find it because you've already used it before. So it's, about, it's all about making your passive vocabulary into your active vocabulary. Next up, number nine, practice thinking in English. So this is similar to uh, translating, but it's the next step already. If you have not watched the video called How to Think in English, I did that video, uh, I think it was a few months ago, it's called How to Think in English. I share about 10 tips, I think, how to think in English. But one of the, th the tips that I shared um, was being in a mode of thinking in English. So for me, I have modes where I speak, where I think in English, and I have modes where I think in Malay. So for these Facebook live sessions, I have to think in English because I'm teaching English, right? But when I'm speaking to my, my, my mother or I'm speaking to my relatives back in Klantan or Terengganu, I would speak, I would be in my Malay thinking mode because I would have to speak in, in Malay. So what you could do is just set yourself one mode where you are thinking in English. It might be difficult at first. It's okay if you if you try your best to think in English, but you still have to use some Malay words. It's fine. Don't be hard on yourself. But at least you have tried, and then you go back, and then you try again. So, like maybe today you try to say something like you say, "I want to, uh, I want to break my fast at the mall today." I don't know if we can do that now, but I want to break my fast with at the mall today and you didn't know the word for the mall, right? The complex membeli belah. Go back and look for the word, for the correct word. So shopping mall, okay? So practice thinking it so that you get into the habit of thinking. It's fine if you use some Malay words, but just build up from there, improve from there, right? Because if this is your level of English to get to here, you're gonna have to push yourself a bit. And also just know that it's always going to be tough in the beginning, but it will get easier the more that you do something. Because like everything else, like English, it's a skill. It's a skill for us because it's a second language. It doesn't come naturally to us. It's a skill that can be improved over time and through lots of uh, implementing and practicing. And Thea says, how about transcribing? You learn new vocabulary words too. Yep, transcribing is great also. You are you are training yourself to write down, listen to the words and write it down. And then if you don't want to know the word, you don't know how to spell it, or you don't know what it means, you can always just look it up online. 
Okay, now we have come to number 10, which is our last tip. Practice speaking in English every day. This is something that is like, yeah, we all know that we have to practice speaking English every day, but do we actually do it? Okay, if you are the kind of person who, uh, if you are the person who speaks your first language every day, try to implement speaking English once a day, maybe for like one hour. Okay, and a lot of our students say, you know, I don't have anybody that I can speak English with. How can I speak English? How can I improve my English when I have no one to speak with? Find someone. It could be you could find a new friend or you could just speak English with the people that you are with every day, like your children or your husband or your wife or your sibling. So just tell them, uh, Abang, I want to speak English every day uh, for one hour. And maybe your husband will be like, are you joking? And then, just, but just do it, right? And then the more that you do it, the more that he will get used to it. And maybe you could say, I just, I just want to speak English when we are at the dinner table during iftar. That's it, right? And after that, after we have uh, eaten, after we've had our dinner, we can go back to Malay. Right, just stick to it. Right, some they, they may not be comfortable with you speaking English. They may laugh at you, but it's okay. Laugh with them, but just keep doing it. And it it will be awkward. It will be especially awkward on the first day, and it will be awkward for about seven days, one week if you do it every every single day. But it gets easier. And then after about the first week, they'll be like, "Oh, mommy is really serious about speaking English every day during iftar, during breaking fast." Right, just keep on doing it. It doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter if people laugh. What matters is that you know that you are serious and you are you are going to improve and you're going to see progress if you keep on doing the work, okay? And practice speaking English every day because I know that many of us, the passive vocabulary that you have is already enough for you to be fluent. So it's all about using the words that you understand and making them your active vocabulary, right? You don't have to necessarily have to learn new words because I'm sure that you already understand a lot of words. If you can understand 100% of what I'm saying, 90% of what I'm saying, the words that you already know and understand is already enough. It's just a matter of making it your active vocabulary, being confident in using the words that you already know. Okay, so that's all from me for today. Thanks so much for joining me. Let's just do a quick summary of the tips. How to improve your vocabulary. Number one, focus on improving your active vocabulary. So remember, passive vocabulary are words that you already know through reading and listening, but you're not confident in using them. But active vocabulary are the words that you are confident in using. So it's about making a passive vocabulary into an active vocabulary for you. Number two, read books and articles that you find interesting. So don't just read grammar books and textbooks. That, those can be boring. So find the topics that you are interested in. What are you already reading every single day? What can be, what are you reading every single day? And how can you find something that is the English reading version? So some of you, maybe you like to keep up on COVID-19 stats, right? Find the English equivalent and read it in English instead. Number three, watch videos and TV shows with English captions and subtitles or subtitles. So if you don't like watching English speaking shows, maybe one of you, you love watching Korean shows, you love watching Malay dramas, watch it with the English subtitles. If it's English speaking shows, watch it with the English captions. Listen to English speaking podcasts and or radio stations. So download the app on your phone. Start with something that you're interested in. Number five, use a dictionary and thesaurus to look up meanings and synonyms. Okay, you could use an online dictionary. You could use a thick uh, published dictionary to look up meanings and the thesaurus to look up for synonyms, which are similar words and also antonyms. Um, this one, this person, what's his name? Uh, Ahmad, Ahmad Faisal, Faisal. 
Take 15 minutes to give Tazkira in English after prayer. Yes, that's great. So if you are already doing it in Malay, try doing it in English. So maybe you like uh, you are you like to read spiritual books, religious books. Find the English equivalent, or maybe you like to read the translation of the Quran. Find the English translation. You can start just reading on it, reading uh, reading the English translation of the Quran online as well if you don't already have it. Next up, number six, keep a vocabulary journal. So keep a notebook of words that new words that you learn so you can when you look up the meaning of it on the dictionary and you find the synonyms write it down in a vocabulary journal because just writing it's just the act of writing even though you might not even look at it again just the act of writing can help you remember better than just looking at it number seven keep an english journal or diary so you could write once a week once a day Write down your feelings, write down your thoughts, write down what happened during the day, your daily activities, or just plan the next day. You could do that as well, just, but do it in English. Just get into the practice of getting your thoughts out onto paper, getting your thoughts out in English. Number eight, practice translating to English. So this is something you can do in your free time. Translate books or something that you read. Try translating it in English. It will help you to improve your vocabulary. Number nine, practice thinking in English. Okay, so set a time where, or a mode in your life where you are speaking, where you are thinking and speaking in English. And number 10, practice speaking in English every day. It could be just one hour a day. If it's, if, if it's not something that you do every day, one hour a day. If you are already speaking English a lot at work, maybe you could add on another hour or two where you are speaking English. Okay, so that's all from me. I hope that you have you will join us on myenglishmatters.com. Uh, join our email list. Go to myenglishmatters.com. Sign up with your name and email address. When you sign up, you will get our seven tips to speak with confidence. They are in the form of videos, so, so we send that through email. So you get seven tips over three days, and after those three the three days, you will get emails from us almost every week so we usually send emails on thursdays with tips and lessons and we also send updates about our online courses and our classes so thank you so much for joining me it's been fun um i hope you found this session beneficial we'll have more sessions inshallah so our next session will be on tuesday again at 10 a.m thank you lan uh, thank you, Nomi. Thank you, brother Sam, Shifa. Thank you. Thanks. And Salam Ramadan. Wait, is it Raya next week already? Yes, it is. We still have one more Facebook Live uh, before Raya. So I hope to see you next week. Thanks so much for joining me. And Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.